Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome on into Clay Share Con 2022. This is day three of our five day extravaganza. And we have Jeff joining us from GR Pottery Forms, and he is going to teach us how to use the forms for measuring. Hmm. What is that? I have no idea what that is. So let's go to Jeff and find out. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you're here with us. Yeah, so good to be back. Been enjoying all the content. I know um, all the glaze stuff, that's like, woo! Yeah, you know, oh, it's like, know. Yeah. <laughs> that makes your brain smoke, right? Uh, so good thing, hopefully you're taking notes and, uh, and taking names. But uh, I, um, for those yesterday, that I've been kind of pushing in between them. Uh, when you had to break, I like, oh, perfect, they have a break. I did a little bit of video live for um, kind of cleaning up the edges from yesterday. So the part two, so, and then uh, send everybody over there. So if you want to check out awesome. um, to how to finish those edges, there's a little more content for you on Instagram. So just to give you that information. So, but yes, today we are talking about measuring and uh, we really, the, you know, the thing with making, uh, pro producing lots of work, we really, we, there's a, we want to kind of start to eliminate steps and, uh, and how can we make this, this process faster, quicker, smoother, but in the end, really to get us a better product. So I just want to spend some time going over some different ideas of um, how you can use the forms themselves to measure and to do your design work for you without having to use a rule. Actually, I don't have a ruler today here. So um, I do not have any, so we don't even have to have a discussion about metric or uh, standard. It can be, you know, it's based on uh, whatever we have. So yeah, so there's a few different things I want to cover. Uh, the one is, um, the first one, let's just get, get started here. And the first one is just kind of like, thinking about general design, like if I am going to make a, a little platter, do I want to have the, the texture the design on the outside? Do I want it on the inside? Do I want this all the way across the clay? So if you want to up that, up, move it up to the next ante, uh, this would be the next level. This would be kind of a way to do that. So what I did was I took, I don't know if you've seen these cute little red stamps, but uh, oh, I got to see it in the camera. Um, some some sweet lady makes these. I think she's in Missouri. Uh, but uh, Deb, Debbie Dela Cruz, she's the best. And uh, anyway, sure so one, one of the real stamps to uh, stamp this edge. You get the and little so snail, is, the new snail. Let's see. Oh, snails. Oh, beautiful. Oh, oh. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. So I am going to take my five by seven form here, and I'm just going to show you the first step on this clay, what I'm going to do. And then I have this kind of this already kind of made, so you don't have to see the full thing uh, for each one. I'm going to try to break them up, try to be like uh, the Today Show and uh, whatever your favorite morning show is of uh, – we got 30 seconds to do this and let's do it. So, uh, yeah. the television. <laughs> so I have a couple of chunks of clay here on my drywall board. And a lot of people get lots of questions about that. Uh, definitely find what's available to you to kind of, I really, I'm really get particular in certain things. And one of them is the board sizes. I want to, I am uh, easily distracted. And so uh, I want things to be consistent. And so I have, I have a whole bunch of these boards that are the exact same size. And then I have a whole bunch of these little boards that, that are the exact same size as well. So that I can kind of, uh, kind of manage my work and kind of know what I have easier. But this one is just, let's see if you can see the camera here. You barely see, I just put this nice uh, masking tape around the edge so that, uh, that crumbles of plaster don't get into my clay. But it also makes it cleaner and look look uh, a little more like a tool than a scrap piece of drywall. 
So I use any, any kind of wood will really work, right? That stays flat, uh, you know, and how you ever want to manage that. I, uh, I don't know, one, one thing I would really like to make sometime is uh, a little storage, a, little, a mini storage unit for your table where you can slide in your, uh, your plates and stack about four of them in there. So, so maybe you'll, someday you'll see uh, the GR Pottery Form storage unit. Clay I'd be interested. You. You'd be in it? You'd in it? You'd do it? No, I didn't do it. I'd be interested in though. I'm in. You make it, I'll I'll get one. All right. All right. Deal. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I can think the great thing is I can use this bottom edge to kind of figure out where that design is going to be. So I can just press it into, into the wet clay, maybe wiggle it around a little bit. And now I have this nice impression, right? And so now I can do all my work. So if I wanted to put those little stamps along the edge, bam. If I wanted to have a different texture on the inside, maybe a little rose or something, just so you have the idea, I can then put that where. So it really kind of helps me to find where those edges are, how I'm gonna design this piece. So now, let's move over here. I got this one sort of a little more finished so you don't have to watch the whole thing. And now what I can do is take my, this form, the eight, this is a five by seven oval. And I think this five by seven oval is like the most versatile form. This is my, one of my favorites. I know Jessica's is the hexagon, but, uh, <laughs> this is like my favorite uh, size. And so like, if you like to have people over and working in your studio, I would highly recommend having lots of these uh, because it really is, it's a really, uh, it's very functional size. It's, um, it doesn't take up a lot of your materials to make things with it. And it doesn't take up a lot of kiln space to use it. So this is what I would highly recommend for a classroom for uh, you know, with clay studio, having friends over, then you can use like uh, these beautiful orange cutters, and uh, you can make a fun little uh, soap dish, soap dish spoon rest. It's just a great size. I I think um, pretty sure there's maybe a good class about this about making pumpkins with ovals. Uh, so using these ovals to make pumpkins in the fall, right? Or Easter eggs in the spring, right? So um, it's just a great, it's just a great size for, I can't, uh, so if you're trying I to I like the out ovals to too. I know the hexagons are my favorites, but I have never met a GR pottery form that I didn't like, so. Yes, all right, good. all right. But yeah, this kind of bringing it up because if you are kind of wondering what to have in your studio when people come over, this is, a, this is what I would recommend, highly recommend. So now I have these two boards, you can see by the camera here. I'm sandwiching the clay and the form together and then doing a little flip. And so then, if I lined it up properly, that form is now registered where it needs to be. So no measuring, no lining it up or uh, trying, to, trying to even it out. And again, this method is, um, like, as you all know, I like to, to drape the clay over and kind of define that. So this is definitely a method what you're using when you're draping the clay. So you definitely could do it if you pre-cut the slab too, but that's just way too advanced. That's uh, way too much commitment for me. So uh, I, gotta, I gotta just deal with this. So, now, we also need to bring in the soup tool. We better uh, smooth this out real quick. And I can compress from this side, right? Watching out for that ridge. Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. Um, and I'm gonna put my little soup tool here at one inch. I'm not gonna quite finish this one, but I'm just, I wanna have a rough shape. Um, 
There's a lot of information on the SU tool. If you missed the earlier demo on what explaining that, there's a bunch of them out there. It's just a way to measure this lip. And I highly recommend you can definitely make your own if you have like an architectural compass. Um, you can uh, do that, add a little wood bead from the craft store on the outside. So there we go. So now we have this nice little tray here. I can, you can maybe see the texture on there. I didn't quite clean it up to press it as much as I normally would, but just for time, I'm gonna move on here. Um, and now, speaking of that measuring, so now what I had, what I did was I pushed that bottom of the form into another piece of clay. And now I can take my foot maker and I can follow that edge. And this will allow me to basically pre-measure this little foot that I'm gonna make. And also is one piece. And so some, some forms it's really critical, like if they have a real, like the, some of the larger ovals we have, it may be good for this, especially just doing the corner because sometimes that corner wants to kind of fold over or round over. And then look at that. Magically, it's the same size as the bottom. And so now we have a foot. So using the forms to make that foot, we talked about a little bit yesterday when I made the triangle one. But, uh, but yeah, so that's another way you can measure, right? Is if you want to make a one piece foot, that's what you can do. I, I know a lot of times people want to make a real decorative foot. I would highly encourage you not to make a decorative foot. It's kind of like putting a decorative foundation underneath your house. It's like, uh, it's really more functional than, um, than what we really, what we really need. So you get the idea here, right? Um, I didn't make an another piece for this other one, but uh, I'll show you in a second about uh, next level. So I'm just gonna put this off the side. Any questions about this general measuring? So far everybody is saying brilliant and they love it. And the only question, um, could you lose your texture if you compress too much? Uh, no, that's, I, I really, that's a great question because um, yes and no. I don't think I have that piece right here available for me to show you, I should I did. But it's really amazing how much pressure you really have to, to get to remove your texture. Uh, so because the, the this form, in my mind, I'm not a scientist, but the forms are diverting that, that tension, that pressure out so that you don't have to, uh, so it keeps that, keeps that texture. That is a really nice um, benefit of using the forms as well, so. Yeah. And if someone wanted to get a form to use for making a butter dish, what size should they get? Oh yeah, all right. That is one of my favorite unanswered, unanswerable questions. <laughs> oh wait, actually, see, usually it's a long answer, but I'm gonna give you a short one this time. Five by eight, five by eight rectangle <laughs> would be what I would recommend, but it's not perfect for everybody. So. I think it's definitely something where it really depends on what you want that top to look like and you know how much how much room you want on the edge. Uh, Martha Grover, if you ever ever um, have a chance to do a Martha Grover workshop, she does a fabulous job of how to make it um, a butter dish. And she was just out at Claycon West demonstrating that, but uh, yeah, so there's so many variables. So if you have a really specific thing and you're going to make 50 or 100 butter dishes and you want a special form made, we can do that for you. Uh, there's a $35 charge for custom work, but uh, per order, uh, you know, so like if you ordered one and then we made it again, that would be fine. But just to kind of set it all up, it's $35. But um, yeah, so I would definitely try to figure out like what you 
what what you would like to use. I so now here we go into the long answer again. Sorry. <laughs> so I have a butter box class, and I have a craft foam template for the top and the bottom. And so the um, craft foam template dimensions. I should really talk to you about making me a butter box bottom because yeah, <laughs> because I just use a piece of craft foam uh, that I cut out in the templates with the class, but. The um, mm -hmm. the issue is with template. It's it's it would be so much nicer to have a form right that I could press in and get that bottom perfect every time. So I'm gonna pay the thirty five bucks, Jeff, and hit you up to make me a form. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yes. I wonder. We might have lost. All right. Oh, there we go. No, you got this your back. Power. You got your back. We're all good. We got you. All right. We got your back. We're good. I was prepared to solve that problem. Shoo. Yeah, so I, I like when I was doing uh, pr doing production work, I, I used the five by eight and then extruded uh, top and cut off one end of the extruded part. It's kind of complicated, but uh, it gave me enough room to uh, to make the top and uh, have a standard stick of butter. But depending on where you are and depending on what kind of a grocery store you go to, you may have different sizes of butter. Too, well, right? that's the so, thing, right? So mine's a butter box that holds a pound block of butter, not a butter dish that holds a stick. So it depends what you use. I like to get the block of butter. That's the kind of butter I buy and we use at our home. So yeah. it's it's all different. And some people get the half sticks. So, yeah. you you know, five by eight will work sometimes, but then maybe not. Yeah. And, you know, so like if you're in Vermont or Wisconsin, you know, you need a lot of butter. So it's, We need uh, a lot of butter. We like our butter here. <laughs> yeah. I think we we like a lot of same things in Wisconsin and Vermont: cheese and butter. Uh, and you can stir up. Yes, yes. So yeah. All right. So, so back to back to it. Back to it. <laughs> distractions, just distractions. But uh, <laughs> yeah. So I made this triangle form yesterday, right? And I just cleaned it up a little bit in the in that little other little live. But uh, so you can go back and watch that. But I just thought, oh, perfect. I have a leather hard uh, form that I can use to demo this uh, next step. And what I did was uh, say I want to make uh, a soap dish that has a little space for water to drain down into. Um, and so I want to lift up my. I want to put a little insert in here to lift it up so that I can have something hidden underneath there. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. So this one, I impressed, oops, I think I might have, uh, oh, no, that's right. I impressed the bottom of the form into the, sorry, here. I'm not really used to this top-down camera, so I got to get better at that. Sorry, I'm all. But uh, I impressed the line there, right? So there's my measurement. And so now if I want to go a half inch up from the bottom, I can use this, uh, I can cut uh, the line here about a half inch. And so I, what you want to do is uh, impress the, full, the, the, the line here into wet clay and then let it sit. I made this at about 11 o'clock today. And so it start, it's a lot stiffer now. And, starting to catch up to this uh, one that's been here overnight. But um, so it's pretty stiff where I don't really want to flex. So now it's actually a little softer than I would want, but we're gonna go with it. And now I can adjust this form to make all the sizes even out. Cause remember, I don't wanna fret about commitment to a certain size. I'm just gonna cut it and then adjust. And so now I'm going to adjust it down to where I need it to be. And so I'm trying to get about a half inch from that mark that I made. And this is pottery. This is clay, right? We're having all these variables of measuring, shrinking, and all this other stuff. So I don't really fret about a certain, it's way better to just go for it. And uh, today's word is go for it. Yesterday was gentle, today go for it. Uh, so, so now what that's going to do is going to fit right inside there. And it's still going to shrink down just a little bit. So now what I could do is 
maybe I don't want that line in there. Now, if I have it set to the certain size that I want, now I'm gonna take my rib, and this really helps to still compress that clay a little bit. It's still a little moist, so I'm gonna remember this uh, movement, right? Try it again. So now I eliminated that, uh, eliminated that line on there. So now I have this nice little piece that fits right inside there. If I want to get real fancy, what I would, could do is, uh, you can see how it's clogging up in my little container here. That, that means it's uh, a little bit too wet. It should just like fall right out. So if I, I uh, under normal situations, I would let it, I would let it uh, sit for a little bit longer. But, you know, we got to go here. Let's do it. So, uh, <laughs> but right, right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel that of the bottom side edge. So it'll leave a nest in there even a little bit better. So this is the pro tip if you want to go to that next level. And so now it's, it's really going to set in there nicely, right? So you get the idea? So maybe in this case, a triangle isn't so, so good for soap. So it's kind of like, you know, all those uh, fancy Ichabon bases where you stick stems of flowers in there, make this nice little Japanese arrangement. And, yeah, uh, Ikebana. Ikebana, yeah. I would just, that's a fun word just to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's way more elegant than wash, but. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think wa is the best. <laughs> uh, yeah. Of course, I'm missing the one thing I wanted to show you. I didn't quite get it out. Oh, actually, Are you looking for a frog? Do you have a little frog? Is that what you're going to put in there? No, no. I'm looking for a knife. Well, no, no. I don't think we had this conversation before, but when Gretchen and I were first dating, I got into big trouble because I was uh, I was so particular about what knife she was using. She pulled a block of butter out or a block of cheese out of my refrigerator and was like going to cut it first when people were coming over. I'm like, you're using the wrong knife. <laughs> <laughs> so I have about, um, I don't know, 15 different types of knives. <laughs> and uh, so it takes a certain knife for a certain type of job. And so this one is this beautiful Sue tool. Shout out to Sue Dolan. She's the one that makes these. Her and her mom, her dad was the designer and fortunately passed away a few years back. And now her and her mom are taking over Dolan. I don't know if you guys know that, but it's a mom-daughter duo, and they make all these tools by hand. So, yes. So, the Dolan tools are a gem. So, what's Love nice about Dolan. this? So, what I I'm going to do... Sorry, long, long, you know, long story to get to a short answer here, but uh, uh, this blade is like triangular, right? So, what I can do is I can make different types of holes, sizes of holes, depending on how deep I enter the knife into the clay. So I'm going to make that little, maybe I have some thin stems on the outside. So what I'm going to do is just turn that knife. I don't know if you can see that really good. That's pretty good. So I can make size of holes. So if I want to make a little bigger hole, I just take it down a little deeper. And so we can make this nice little variety of holes. And uh, maybe, uh, you know, we want to be wabi sabi. So we want to have like maybe three, five, we want to have an odd number of holes to make it nice. And I like to kind of just put them sporadically and create their own little, their own little love. So I would wait, you know, um, so now I have a general idea. I probably would come back when it's just, just a little bit stiffer and just clean these holes out from the other side with, with the knife. I'll do one of them. And I would leave the temptation, right? Especially if your mom, you want to, uh, to fix that little mark on, on us. But um, I, would, I would not uh, touch this until it's dry. Avoid the temptation. 
So now we have this, this wonderful little Ikebana that we can now stick little flowers in, right? So this just gives you another way, another method of like, how can you use the actual forms to measure the, how you're going to, uh, what you're gonna do to add some design to your work, all right? See all the, all the possibilities, it's unbelievable. And uh, I know this is, a, not, this is a hot topic, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna go there, <laughs> not really. Everybody wants an egg tray, right? Everybody right. wants, so if you want an egg tray, you have to go find Jessica's class on how uh, to make an egg tray. You can make your own egg tray form with you one of Jeff's chair pottery forms. That's right. Jeff is not going to make an egg tray for you. He's not going to make one. But I have a class to teach make you how to make forms. your own. I'll make your form so that you can make your own, right? And so, but in this case, what I did was, um, I, always got this, I forgot about this fun underglaze on the bottom. I did the same technique that I did with this other, with the other, with the triangle one. I made an insert, right? And then I put some clay under there to give it some more support. But now look at this, I can use, I can use this tray by itself or brilliant. when I okay, have okay. fancy friends over and they want deviled eggs, then I can uh, have a little egg tray. Yeah, that's so great. You're not limited because you don't have, a, you have a plate that you put the insert in. It's not only for eggs. That's great. Yeah, and guess what? It's more, there's more. <laughs> <laughs> this can now become a trivet look at this beautiful trivet you have nice. to put your hot pan on there your lasagna or whatever and once it's fired it's going to be nice and strong so another idea another way to use the form to kind of incorporate into your design and measure um what you, what you need or what you're going for so i know um i uh and like the soap dishes one, soap dish ones I think are the most practical. So if you want to have that soap raised up just a little bit. So again, that five by seven. So maybe I want to take this one that I made here and make an insert to put that. Uh, and also if you need to, this actually did this video or we did this um, discussion when we were at ClayCon West too. So if you really wanted to add some little holes in there you could take one of deb's cutters and then make those marks and if the clay is the clay is really firm like it is now then you might just have to cut those out but you have so many options of of what you can do so even using the clay, the even using the cutters as as measuring tools, right? So another another way you can use not have to use a tape some sort of tape measure. But now we could cut those all out, and then we'd have a nice little insert. Really key that the clay is leather hard. That's pretty stiff when you're moving it and adjusting it to go inside the inside the plate otherwise we could get some warping issues what size oval did you use for the egg plate for the plate part you um know. this one is let's see i gotta do the math uh it's not uh i think we have 11 by 13 is the biggest one it's the next size below but the nine and a half is, by yeah. 11 and a half yeah, yeah, that's it, exactly. Nine and a half by eleven and a half. But the beauty, that, that's the whole idea of this whole concept, is that you can really use any kind of form that you want or that you have available. So maybe you wanted to make a big long rectangle or rectangle or oval, and you could kind of figure out how many eggs you need, uh, how many eggs you want to serve at a time. And uh, yeah, you could even woo, kick it up a notch, right? is uh, make one of these have a plate stand in it so you could have two levels of of uh, eggs. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, so many possibilities. That's why we're here, right? Just to, I thought maybe narrow the possibility, but maybe we were adding. Uh, just another quick, maybe a little plug for Plum Island transfers here. She makes these templates that um, have the insert, so you can also use, there's also great templates out there that you can use to help you measure as well. So these can you can use to measure the inside. This happened to be for the four and a half by 13 half rounded rectangle. But um, yeah, so if you wanna do all different um, designs or whatever, there's so many options. So like, here we go. This is, the, this is for a six by 15 rounded, rounded rectangle. Wouldn't this make a nice egg tray? So you could put your eggs, you know, probably fit six or 10 eggs in there and cut them out. Yeah, and you can find little egg cutters all over. So yes, lots of options. All oh, right, cool. there's more. <laughs> all right, I guess I have this clay and I wanna use it. Anybody else have ideas of how they're using their forms to uh, measure? Well, you can ask. Yes. Anybody out there? Everybody loves the idea of making the egg trays. And then uh, someone suggested the cutouts from the soap dish, you could use that as your feet. So when you press the cutter in that does the soap dish, the three little bits that you get out, you could use those as a feet for the soap dish. Yeah. Then you yeah, have a drain okay. built, then then you know any moisture could easily drain off out at the bottom. Yeah. And trans transfer that design right to the bottom so it kind of continues out throughout the piece. That's a great idea. Love it. So smart. All right, so now I have a, this is a fresh piece of clay. And uh, what I'm gonna do is does anybody like using underglaze transfers? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> so I want to make a little five inch, little cutie little tray, little bowl here. I'm going to incorporate, and you can do this again, but you can do this with any size. So I'm just picking a small one um, just because uh, it's just easier to manage for this. Session. So the great thing again is these forms, they stack on top of each other, right? And so you can use them to help your help measure. So say I wanted to have this design on the whole plate, uh, except for the center where the food is going to be, right? So what I can do is I take the size below. So in this case, it's a little three and a half. And I can take my Take my um, underglaze transfer, and I can just trace that bottom with a pencil, right, or marker or whatever. Actually, let me let me find that sharpie down here. Uh, I don't want something where you can see the line better. I guess you can see this pen better. So I'm going to tell everybody it's Plum Island Transfers. I've typed it a bunch of times, but everybody keeps asking again. So it's Plum Island Transfers for the yeah, template. She's a, a yeah. small. Um, she's another small business, um, and she makes transfers and templates. Yes. Does she yeah. have anything else? Because I'm not that familiar I, with her. Yeah, I think she's doing, um, she's just uh she has stuff to sell so she can buy more tools, right? Like the rest of us. Bad thing to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I think she's got a, a laser cutter now to help cut those templates. And so now she's, she may be doing some stamps and stuff. I haven't checked with her much lately either. On what, uh, what she's, she's got stencils too. too. Yeah. She's a, she's a designer. Like she used to do two dimensional design work. So she, um, in her, in a job. So she, uh, she has all the skills to do all the technical part of all that stuff. So thankfully for those that, of us that don't have those skills, um, it works out really well. So this is a sandbow, I believe, uh, underglaze transfer. 
And I believe you can get a discount, right, for those uh, during the place you yes. come. Are we doing 25% off? 25% yes. off. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's other, other, brands out there too, you know, what companies out there are really, really like. Like GR uh, Pottery Forms is doing a good discount too. Oh, yeah. That's right. Did you hear that? Oh, don't tell anybody, but you can get 20% off sets that are already discounted. <gasps> that's right. GR Pottery Forms has 20% off discount on sets that are already discounted. So Which you don't you need to do the rest of the year. This is the only time. And you get double. Normally, it's only 10%. Usually, so, yeah. So now what I can do is I drew this line on here. And now what I can do is take my scissors. Wow, that was fast. And cut out the center. So we have, have the marking here, right? So now I can just take my piece of clay. And so I use that form to make that measurement. So now I'm going to take my piece of clay and trans do the transfer of this uh, underglaze. I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know that. You know, I know Kathy brought it up. Her her method of the EC transfers, but then I'm really excited to see those ones from Speedball. Those uh, for you forget the name now, but. I'm definitely gonna have to look into that. I love the idea of uh, making your own designs and templates and stuff. So, yeah. So no fret here. You know, not a lot of measuring, not a lot of uh, lining up. Just putting that uh, fast and easy, right? So now I can remove this. Underglaze. And now what I can do is I can line up my form again. <laughs> and, and you know, I'm just going to throw it out there. When you had the underglaze transfer on, if you wanted to, you could have put a color in the center and the transfer would have been your resist. So you would have had a perfect circle filled in, in a color if you wanted to, right? Options. Yes. Yes. Options are endless, right? Woo. Oh, yes. <laughs> Got to find one more here in a minute. Probably have enough, but always good to have lots of boards around. So now I have it all lined up. And even if I wanted to, um, in this case, I have a round one. If I wanted to put uh, this onto the wall, I could insert. My spacer, and then the wall board. A tiny little there. thing gonna go on the wall. The wall. Yeah. Do a little flip here. And again, now I have that. Uh, now I can just form the plate. And if you needed to make a hand built foot, you could use a form. Oh, I got one, I think. I have another one here. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have much time left. So there, is there any- um, Four minutes, four minutes. I, you can do so much in four minutes. Yes. Oh, I know, it's like eternity, right? It can be. But I-, I I always uh, kind of forget about the delay of uh, some platforms. And so I'm like, oh no, I got to give you like two minutes to uh, answer, ask your question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I, I think it's, uh, so there's, to me, I, you know, my hope and my, is to really make your studio time enjoyable and to uh, find ways to kind of work in different techniques and things and, Definitely to try to figure out ways to pro solve problems and, uh, for yourself that uh, that will work. So great to just kind of make notes of what's happening and uh, how you did things and try to make it better each time. I always say if we just try to be a little better each day, we're going to be pretty 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 awesome. So we do have a question: How thick is the egg tray insert? 
So how thick was the slab you started with when you made your egg? A quarter inch. You could go really quarter. thick if you wanted. If you wanted to use it more for um, a trivet per se, uh, you you could uh, make it a little bit thicker. This clay obviously shrunk a little bit, but um, yeah, you can definitely uh, you can definitely do that. Thanks. Yeah, so you could yeah. just use like when you roll out the thickness of the slab that you make the plate. Yes, yes, yep. And so, yeah, I would uh, whatever you're using already. I think you know the nice thing is uh, if you don't have a slab roller, they have all these. Uh, I have them here. I think the paint sticks at uh, you can go to Home Depot get paint sticks. And uh, a thick, this is a thicker one. It's about a quarter of an inch. These are you know our Home Depot ones. won't let you take them. You gotta buy them. You get them if yeah. you buy a jar, a thing of paint. They used to just let you take them, but now you have to buy paint sticks. Oh man, so. yeah. I know they have. I think oh, I forget what I, was, I hope. I really like Home Depot, but uh, I think it was at Home Depot. Maybe it was Lowe's. They had uh, like a three pack that you could buy, but you really need two of them. One for each side that you can then roll your roller across, right? Oh. Got a couple of questions. So we'll just roll through those. Uh-huh. And I lost where they were. Where are they? Are they on YouTube? Where where are you folks asking us questions? A Facebook. People want to see the underside of the egg insert again. Oh yeah. Oh, do you have any new forms coming out? The tree and the hearts are great. They want more. You get you did something oh, I know. when you started doing the the yeah. I'm sorry, I have bad answers for that. You know, um, <laughs> you to, you know <laughs> any new so. forms at all. <laughs> What's that? Any any new designs then? Any new forms coming down the line? Oh, there's definitely in my mind's always working on uh, the new new thing and uh but uh as far as like those holiday shapes, I think it's uh I kind of, I don't really want to, I, you know, so it's because we're, I'm using distributors and they're all in the clay world and uh, you know, their shelves are kind of small because they're in the clay world that, uh, you know, it's limited to what we really can carry. So uh, I know there's other people out there making other stuff. So uh, um, maybe they're going to be your answer, but uh, I really want to make forms that you can make lots of different options with. So uh, probably won't see too many. Holiday, They're more very holiday. limited. Yes, we're talking about maybe doing like different tree every Christmas, like uh, oh, that'd the be tree fun. of the year. Um, the tree of the year. Really the nostalgia of that one we made this year, and so I don't know. It's gonna be hard to make anything right. different. We we got it. Thirty seconds. What did you use to cut the hole for the egg tray? Just a cookie cutter. Yeah. Actually, I have them right here. I have. I took uh, those biscuit cutters. Yeah. And I took a round one and they have they had become in sets and then I did bent them with my hands into an egg shape. So that's what I used. So I have different sizes, but I bet you Deb has some. I was wondering if Deb had some. Uh, all right. So okay. lots. Um, what do you do with the leftover clay that has the underglaze transfer on it? Uh, you know, there's not so much in there. I don't know if you maybe just saw I just put it in this wad of clay. Uh, there, yeah, there's so ins in insignificant that I don't really worry about it. Okay. We add some, we add a surprise later on. Well, we are out of time. We actually went over a tiny bit because I just, you know, didn't just wanted to keep chatting. So many questions. Thank well, you. Thank you, Jeff. everybody. Thank you thank for you. another awesome presentation. Everyone, if you have questions for Jeff, you can reach out to him. You know, you can go to grpowerreforms.com and you contact him there. And you can also follow him on social media. If you're not doing that yet, check him out on Instagram. And uh, that egg tray, this is what I did. So I kept it simple. I used, uh, I think it's an eight and a half by 11 form. Maybe it's a little bigger. I, it's in the class. And then I just glued, glued some half eggs to it to make egg tray. So you could do all kinds of things with this but anyhow I love Jeff's insert idea and I'm gonna have to try that because my egg tray I do love it but I only use it for eggs to be fair my kids love deviled eggs so we can make them all the time so it gets used a lot in my house just depends all right so we're gonna take a quick break we are going to be back 
with Michael Harbridge, and he is going to be doing a bunny gnome, uh, which is the new clay puzzling methods, and we'll be